Sagittarian friends, and welcome to your horoscope for August of 2020. We're Sag this month. As we end the month, you really start to come a little bit more into some career time. So that's very exciting. But before then, as we're coming into the month, there's this full moon happening in Aquarius that lands in your third house. And it just gives me this sense for you of study. Like you're the natural teacher, studier, higher learning kind of energy. And this gives me the sense that you're getting into the ushy gushy of studying something maybe. It could definitely be related to travel. That's also a thing that's in your wheelhouse. But this one is telling me maybe you're changing your mind or you're thinking differently about something else that you're studying. So I look forward to talking about all of that in just a minute. First, I want to let you know the eat and greets are going to absolutely continue throughout August. In August, we're going to welcome Glenn Mitchell, Kay Taylor, Kathy Rose, Susan Miller will be here. Laura Nelbondian will be here as well. And Clarissa Dolphin is coming to talk more about vibrational astrology because you said you wanted to hear about it. So I'm bringing more people to teach the things that we're interested in talking about over here. So really a good time. I hope to see you in there. I hope you are enjoying them. If there are people you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section down below. As well, I will be joining the Astrology Summit for Power and Purpose, and that is coming up August 7th through the 9th. I will be teaching all about the moon, but not just me. This is a free summit with 18 other astrologers from people who've been in the game for a really long time, up and coming voices. There's a lot of us in there and we're just talking to you about astrology, how you can use it. We're halfway through the year. I don't know if you can use some inspiration, some motivation, whatever that looks like. This will be a beautiful place to come experience that. So get registered in the um, description box down below, okay? All right, Sag, let's jump in here and talk about this month and this moon, which begins the month for us. On the third, we've got that full moon happening in the energy of Aquarius. Now, the full moon says something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So this could also be a time where you've already been working on something, and now you're starting to see a little bit of a culmination of it. There's a lot of light shed on something that you've been studying reading, communicating about since this is in your third house and you're starting to ask yourself at this particular full moon where you need to maybe be a bit more Aquarian. Where do you need to bring in some unconventional thoughts or behaviors or teachers in order to bring it to culmination and to be successful? Where have you been trying to be successful over here on your own maybe? And you're like, no, I need to actually integrate a teacher. I need to integrate being the student and get under someone's eyes so that I can allow their message to guide me as well. This is a wonderful energy to be Aquarian. Aquarius is also over our social energy, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if you aren't studying online, listening to lots of audiobooks, something like that. Now, there is this energy that zings through just a little bit as we get to about the fifth of the month for me that says perhaps you are going back um, to studying something or you're traveling home, but it's like there's the details of the journey in some way, shape or form, or maybe you're going to that college reunion, even if it's just virtually. Something like that, Sag, has you moving in this direction of putting things in your head or changing your mind. And there's a change and shift in conversation that's coming as this moon plays out. But then also as we get to the fifth, there's a little bit of a shift of energy. Now there is a shift of energy on the fifth as well because Mercury is gonna move into the energy of Leo fellow fire energy. So it's like bringing fire to the mouth, right? A really beautiful self-expressive conversation. And this is lighting up your ninth house space. So this is the other reason why I say in the ninth house, Sag, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, putting yourself out there. There's definitely travel that could be available and there are people who are still traveling right now. So if that's you, you could definitely see some change in the travel situation here. Maybe you are really having to express yourself. I just see you on stage, Sag. You've got a good teacher's heart. I would hope to see all of you in your own capacity, really stepping up, throwing those shoulders back and teaching or at least doing the training right now at a higher level so that you can come out and teach to us later. Your brilliant teachers, the way that you own truths, I think is something that we really have to just stand up and hats off to our Sagittarian friends. So this Mercury energy here in the ninth house could definitely see you doing some training, some teaching, or even if you have things going on that are legal, 
this could be some shift in that conversation as well. On the seventh, we've got Venus moving into the energy of Cancer, and this lights up your eighth house space. Now, the eighth house is joint resources, right? joint connections and finances. So your partner's money is maybe getting a little bit of a boost here. Venus is going to be a benefic energy to attract things into you. You maybe don't have to work so hard for them. So perhaps you're getting money that you didn't necessarily earn. Is this money from taxes, from insurance? Are you getting another stimulus check? I mean, you know, whatever it looks like, this could be money coming to you where you didn't necessarily have to earn it, but you are attached to the outcome of it. So like I said, a partner's money could be changing here as well. But what else I love Venus for? In the energy of Cancer, she likes to be at home. That's good and comfortable. But the eighth house wants to connect right? So you could have collaborations from home happening. This could also be collaborations out in the world as well. The eighth house is just a very good joining energy. And for those of you who are ready for it, you need a little bump, bump, bump in your life. Venus in the eighth house is delicious for sex, but your emotional needs have to be met first since it's sitting in the energy of cancer. So whatever you're looking for, it's looking for you this month, Sag, as well, okay? On the 15th, we've got Uranus taking a retrograde in the energy of Taurus. So this is going to light up your sixth house space. Now Uranus going retrograde. He's our planet of freedom, of excitement, of uniqueness, but added to the whole, right? As he goes retrograde, he's going to take you back through this sixth house, which is your health, your daily routines, your mental health and wellness lives up here, your ability to be of service, right? Now, Uranus in Taurus is already a bit of a disruption to this area of your life. And Sag, for the most part, you tend to like a little bit of routine. You like to know what's coming. Even though you're a mutable energy and you're pretty good at blending with what's next, you seem to really kind of like a little routine. So in your Taurus energies, as they have been shaken, maybe it's exciting, but also a little unnerving. As Uranus goes retrograde, he's going to ask you to look at what do you need to put down? What do you need to stop worrying so much about in order to have freedom? In the energy of Taurus as well, Sag, Uranus is going to ask you, what do we need to do or what do we need to adjust in your daily routines that are keeping us from having financial or physical or material freedoms, right? Uranus wants you to be free to be you and be free to innovate as well. So you'll get to go back over from now until January of 2021, this particular area. And it's looking at what do you need to release or adjust or come at at a different direction or a different attitude in order to be free in your day-to-day -day living and in your health life. So this may also include going back over your diet and your routine. Drop back into the body. This is Taurus energy. It's in an earthy spot in your chart. Drop into the body and see what you need, okay? On the 19th, we've got a new moon happening in Leo. So again, planting these seeds of intention of where you'd like your expansion to come from. And it's your expansion. This is Leo energy. This is an expansion because you have to. This is what do you want to do? Where do you want to get bigger? Where do you want to grow? Where do you want to teach? Where do you want to travel to, right? This new moon says, I'm going to take some self-confidence and I'm going to plant it in this darkest of the lunar cycles. And I'm going to watch what blossoms on the other side because I want to lead, right? And being a leader doesn't mean that every Sagittarius wants to be on stage. That doesn't have to be what you want, Sag. But where do you want to even lead in your own life? in this area. There's so much going on in your second house since you've got all the big guys over in your second house as well. I feel like it's a really big year for you, Sag, where you're considering your mind frame. You're considering the power of your mind and your ability to honestly, maturely, next level, create some resources for yourself. And this month is nothing but a helper to that as well, especially since it asks you, what makes you you and what do you want to do with that? On the 20th, we see the Mercury energy moving into the energy of Virgo. On the 22nd, we're going to see the sun joining Mercury over there in the energy of Virgo. So now we've got the 10th house, the tip top of the chart, where you make money, your career, what we know you as, your reputation. It is all under the guise of Virgo right now. Virgo is going to help you get this area organized reorganized, show you the details of how you can get something going in your career and make it happen. This Virgo energy here is also very comfortable because Merc Mercury is the normal ruler 
of Virgo. So he is comfortable just working and living his best life. The sun is bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. You are motivated. There is good movement available for you with these particular energies. Your critical thinking skills at work are phenomenal. Your analytical skills at work right now are phenomenal. Now, the one thing I will tell you with all of this heat going through here, this is also a fellow mutable energy. So you do want to make sure you're giving yourself a break. Take some downtime. Don't think yourself crazy, Sag, right? This is a very mental but mutable energy. So you want to make sure you're not making yourself crazy. Hydrate, rest well, take a break from the projects that you need to so that you don't get your anxiety kicked up and go in multiple different directions. But instead, you have this ability to deal with the day-to-day -day details of things and allow it to come a little bit more easily to you because Virgo wants to be of service here. You maybe want to be of service to help other people get their details figured out. Either way, Virgo showing up in this area to help, to heal, and to serve. And that's what you'll definitely be able to see in this 10th house area of your chart. All right, Sag, last month I think was a good month. I know some Saggies have been having a hard time, but for many it has been a very good month, and I feel like August adds to that. I feel like there's still a lot that can be done. We don't have any eclipses going on besides Uranus. No one's running into retrograde. So kind of ready, steady as we go in the slower pace of life when we have high retrogrades. But still, this month I think feels real real steady in the work that we can get done. So I hope good things come for you. Whatever happens for you, please leave me um, some, some fill-ins, some catch-up in the uh, comment section down below. All right, Sag, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you at the Astrology Summit for Power and Purpose and also in the Eat and Greets all month long. I love you, Sag. Bye.